All right, my dear Bible in 365 brothers and sisters, this is an intro to a really good book. Now, I've spent a lot of time thinking about how to introduce the book of Isaiah. And the problem with introducing a book like Isaiah is that it is so huge and there's so much involved in it. How in the world do you summarize a book like Isaiah? Well, the way that I would summarize it is going to be a very bird's eye perspective on the book, but it is important. Now, first of all, we call Isaiah a major prophet, not because of the fact that he was a greater prophet than uh, maybe Jeremiah or Daniel or Amos or any of them, but he's called a major prophet because of the amount of content that Isaiah actually prophesied concerning. In other words, he wrote a lot down. And of course, Isaiah is one of the largest of the prophetic books, which is why he's called one of the major prophets. Now, what's interesting is Isaiah also ministered to the northern kingdom as well as the southern kingdom. But what is perhaps very unique about Isaiah centers around an experience we see recorded in Isaiah chapter 6. And that is when Isaiah was going through one of the worst times of his life, a very dear friend of his, King Uzziah, had died, and it was very difficult for him to observe, to be a part of. Uh, it was a, a, a very, very, very hard time for him. Now, I want to just stop and uh, really talk about this thing, how death can influence us and really affect us. This, of course, has been one of the worst years of my life in that my father passed away suddenly and unexpectedly uh, in January. And what is perhaps terrible about that is this, the, sort of the sense of loss that I experienced, right? Almost like there's a gap, something in, in the, at the core of my heart that just completely changed the way I felt as I watched my dad's life pretty much dwindle in front of me. And it was a, a terrible, terrible time, but perhaps it took me closer to the Lord than I've ever been before. Very similar to the experience that I had with the loss of my mother. I had an incredible childhood. My mom and my dad loved the Lord. They raised me in the ways of the Lord. And the death of my father, which I hate saying his death, or I hate saying that with my mother, they're with the Lord. So they're more alive now than they ever have been. But me witnessing that, me being a part of that and watching my dad take his last breath, by the way, uh, over FaceTime. I mean, that's the terrible, horrible part about these wicked, demonic rules concerning this uh, pandemic. But I'll just leave that be. Um, one of the things that I really realized at that moment was that eternity was more real for me than it ever had been before. Uh, my awareness of God being God grew. It didn't lessen. It got better. And my relationship with God grew. And perhaps that very year for Isaiah, that's what happened to him. In Isaiah chapter 6, it shows a time where King Uzziah died. He was at the worst place of his life. He was at the low of his lows. And God appears to him. And as God appeared to him, God made him aware of his weaknesses. Isaiah had a problem with his mouth and he did stuff, you know, where he said all kinds of words. I can't really repeat them, but y'all know the <laughs> kind of things that Isaiah was doing. But what was interesting was the Bible says that God made him aware of those things. He repented. He said, woe is me. I'm a man of unclean lips. And God cleansed him. And then God took the very weakness that he had and he used it for his glory. And if there's one thing you're going to be able to learn from the book of Isaiah, that is God will take your weakness and he will use it as a strength to do incredible, amazing things for his glory. And so we are going to get into this. And it is interesting. I should uh, sort of mention one thing because it does get difficult for people. It would seem as though we're talking about two different Isaiahs from the Isaiah at the very beginning of the book to the Isaiah at the very end of the book. And the reality of it is we're not talking about two different Isaiahs. We are simply seeing evidence of the fact that God is a graceful God and he's a merciful God and he shows his love and his mercy through his people. And there is a couple of areas of Isaiah that I really want you to focus on and think about, right? Of course, Isaiah chapter seven is a good place to stop and to focus. Uh, of course, Isaiah chapter 14, another good place to stop and to focus. There's some interesting history there, especially if you wanna learn about our enemy, our common enemy. Uh, the other thing that I would recommend you do is spend some time with the end of Isaiah 52 
through Isaiah 53. There are some really heavy parts there. And then study the portions of Isaiah that give you insight about flying over your circumstances, like a like an eagle that mounts up with his wings and flies over. There's some amazing biblical insight that you can get from all of it. It is all life-changing. All of it is encouraging. And I would highly recommend that you go find my teaching in the book of Isaiah. Uh, yes, I've taught through all of the book of Isaiah. You can go to jameskadis.com for that. You can go to calvarychapelsignalhill.com. You can, of course, go to our app, uh, Calvary Chapel Signal Hill. You can find it there. Uh, you'll find a lot of it on YouTube and all over where you find me, you'll find it. So we've got it all there. God bless you guys. Keep fighting the good fight. And I cannot think of a more encouraging book than the book of Isaiah, especially if you've had a year like me. Get ready because this is the year that God's going to use you in a greater way. And by the way, the best is yet to come. God bless you guys.